Good evening and welcome. The economy got another reality check today when the latest inflation numbers came out. Wholesale prices were up 3.2% in August as compared to 1.8% in July. Now, of particular concern in that is the fact that food prices seem to have risen sharply by 5.7% in August. And within that, vegetable prices up 44.9% in August as compared to 21.9% in July. So they'd already started to move. And onions, that perennial problem, up 88% in August and they would actually dropped a little bit in, in July. So something to worry about in the rise of uh, food prices. And that's to add to that thing which has been causing a lot of concern over the last few days, which is the rise in fuel prices and especially petroleum products, uh, petrol and diesel. Fuel prices double, uh, going up in August to, by 9.9% versus 4.37% in July. Now that jump in both food and fuel prices will be causing some concern because this is at a time when growth is already looking sluggish, jobs hard to find. And the reason why this will cause some concern is because it could potentially prevent the Reserve Bank of India from cutting interest rates further. And that's something that the government has been asking for, that's something economists have been asking for, but it's not gonna happen uh, if inflation is going on. Of course, some people are blaming the government itself for inflation, in particular pointing to high petrol prices and saying that's partly a result of the government and what it's doing with taxation. CPM chief, for example, Sita Yachuri, tweeting this. He says, since 2014, the price of crude has fallen by 85%, but the price paid by the common Indian has increased. Why? He's also attached a placard saying, why should you be paying 79 rupees for that litre of petrol? which costs the government only 31 rupees. The answer, obviously, is taxation. And the BJP had a response to that. Amit Malviya tweeted the following, essentially blaming high petrol and diesel product prices on Hurricane Harvey's impact. And he says that these products are up all across the globe, which is correct. Petroleum prices are up all across the globe. He also blames a recent spike in crude prices, which makes somewhat less sense because crude is still a fraction of what it was just three to four years ago. This note going on to blame state governments for hiking taxes and suggesting that petroleum be brought under GST. So it's, it's very possible that that is something which the government is going to consider doing. Now, I'm just going to try and come to the economics around some of this. Dharmesh Pradhan also, uh, very, just a short while back, put out this tweet uh, essentially talking about the fact that if you look at the way diesel prices have risen in India, 4% up, it's less than diesel prices rising across the globe, uh, 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 which is which is 20%. And, and that's essentially, he's saying the same thing about petrol. Now, I'm going to get to all of our experts in to talk about this because it is certainly to Dr. Chagdish Shetigar uh, is joining us, uh, economic professor at BIMTEC. He's been, uh, he was the economic advisor to former Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee. Shekhar Gupta joining us, one of our top journalists, Pavan Khera with us as well. Sunil Alak is joining us, uh, independent marketing consultant, top uh, economic thinker as well. Madan uh, Sabnav is joining us, chief economist at Care Ratings. I'm going to get in the bullet train at some point and what that says about priorities, but I just want to try and understand this fuel point. If you take a look, uh, Dr. Dr. Shetigar, at what is being said, Dharmesh Pradhan and what the BJP is saying, it is correct up to a point that yes, international petroleum product prices have spiked after Hurricane Harvey. That's because refineries in Houston have been held up. So the price of petrol has risen and the price of diesel has risen. But the price of crude itself has not actually moved up that much, 47 to 53, and it's still way lower than it was you know, three or four years ago. So if petrol and diesel prices in India are high, it's partly because the government is keeping a lot of it. It's not, it's not allowing that drop in, diesel, in crude prices to have gone out to the customer. Governments made windfall gains, basically. No, initial increase, especially from 2014, yeah. uh, both the accounts, one is the rise in the international crude price plus the depreciation of the rupee actually. That is, uh, Sitaram actually was wrong when he was pointing out why the prices have gone up so much. It is only bec because of uh, depreciation of the rupee. But of late, the rupee has been getting strengthened, especially during the last uh, few months. Now, this is something, uh, I mean, uh, cannot be explained. 
Uh, but other part, are as you, far are as you concerned about about the rise of food prices, in inflation coming back, which might mean the RBI can't cut interest rates. Are you concerned about this? No, there again, I mean, we have to go into the detail. If the rise in the price of in the food price uh, going up is a worrying point, but if this rise is because of the rise in the demand, then that also indicates that is there is economic activity is a picking up because if you look at the data on the industrial production index yeah, as well as the CPI they are moving in the same direction for instance in Actually, the July July <laughs> when it picked up yeah prices so at the Kera same time IIP also picked up so that is a good thing actually good if IIP yeah. continues to move yeah. up Pavan Kera uh, on the economics of this I'm going to come to to some of the policy behind it on the economics of this the fact of the matter is the worst thing that could happen is that growth is down and inflation is going up because then you can't cut interest rates and then you're really in a mess. Dr. Sherigar is saying that it's possible that prices have started to move back up because growth is picking up again. Look at the excise figures. Under the Congress, what was the excise in, in, uh, that is on a, April 2014? Excise on petrol was 17 rupees 33 paisa. On diesel, it was 21 rupees 48 paisa. Today, what is the excise now? Sorry, it was 3 rupees 56 paisa under us and today it's 17 rupees 33 paisa on petrol. 129% in 2015-16 is the revenue earned only through excise on oil. 211% yeah. it's earned in this year. So okay, let me just get you on the... Excise thing let me just has get nothing you to do with the global crude oil. That's something which the government the should... The government do. is making... If they bring, bring it under GST, okay. won't it have an impact? Okay, Shekhar Gupta, I'm going to come to the food point also. because Both food and fuel is going up. His particular point, which what Sita Ramichuri and others are saying, is that somehow the government is, you know, cautioning the middle class and citizens on the head. Flip side of that would be that, right, there was a very high fuel subsidy earlier. Petrol and diesel prices were kept unfairly low, lower than what they should be. The government was subsidizing it. Every time you went out and you filled up your Mercedes or any car for that matter, uh, the government was, was subsidizing that. Now that subsidy has been reduced or has gone. That's the flip side of the argument. That's the point that the BJP is making. Well, first of all, Sitara Machuri and others, as you say, they will protest whatever the fuel, pri uh, fuel price, unless the government is subsidizing it. Fuel price subsidies are the most obscene subsidies. Yeah. Because nobody who uses petrol is without a vehicle, so it's not really poor. I mean, there are, there are many strata in the middle class, but anybody who uses a vehicle is not poor. There are lots of other poor in India who needs the help of the state. Second, Sitara Michuri and others were also, compl compl also complaining when the previous government planned to or tried to raise prices to match up with international crude oil prices. The okay. principle is energy prices should be consistent. Energy prices should not and the principle should, should not oscillate up and down. It, the principle now is allow it to move. Freely. No, but but, but yes, but the debate is as Pawan says, excise. There has to be a carbon tax. You cannot sell cheap energy anymore. You have to put a minimum high price on energy. Otherwise, nobody will but move to alternate sources. Logically, yeah, logically, you should try and get everyone to move to electric. Uh, is even there faster any data than... that people are disinc being disincentivized and moving towards alternative? Is there any data to substantially prove Shekhar's point? Yes, look here. This, this, no, this, this, no, 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 no. The Hang sale on. of cars, Shekhar. The sale of vehicles. Let's focus on that data. That's yeah. going up. So actually, where does it actually, disincentivize? Actually, what the NGT has YouTube. done, which is banning diesel cars, you know, putting restrictions on petrol, that's, that's, that's I think essentially what seems to be NGT happening. orders are a bit of a joke, so let's not go there because those orders come and those orders disappear. But the fact is that petroleum products um, sales growth and import growth this year has been among the lowest in a very long time. Now, it could be because of economic slowdown, but it, but it is low. Okay. And the fact but is then, more people will buy vehicles and a carbon tax is a very virtuous tax. Okay. Madan Sabnavis, I'm just trying to get you to understand the big picture right now on food prices starting to move back up. Fuel prices are at an all-time, uh, not at an all-time high, but <coughs> certainly are, 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 are much higher than they've been just a short while back. And the, the, we just heard Dr. Shetigar saying it could be a sign that economic activity is picking up. Are you seeing any of that or is this a result of other factors, Hurricane Harvey or whatever it is? See, in my opinion, I think whatever is happening on the inflation front is being caused more on the supply side rather than on account of increasing demand. Because we haven't really seen these kind of demand impulses coming either from households or from industry. 
Now, if you just look at the kind of WPI numbers which we had today, if we look at uh, the primary products, I think vegetables was a major concern. I mean, that's one of the reasons as to why it's gone up. We have seen fuel prices going up because the international prices of crude oil has gone up, and the government, in its wisdom, has decided that they're not going to subsidize it and let, let, let the pass-through take place to the final consumer. We've seen some kind of uptick in manufacturing prices, but I don't think it's anything perilous for us to really start panicking right now. I think because a number of around 3.2, 3.5, 4%, I don't think it's something which is way order, out of the ordinary. I think we normally do have a WPI inflation of around 4%, so I don't think there's any problem out there. But the only concern which I, would, which I have right now is if you look at the growing pattern of various crops, there definitely seems to be shortages in oil seeds and pulses, which means that we could just go back to the syndrome where pulses prices start increasing. That's something I think the government should be prepared to take uh, prompt corrective action by okay. reckoning the imports on time so that we don't have a situation where the price of Tudar and Mungdal really go up. Okay. Uh, Sunil Alag, any time when prices start to go up, especially when it's food and onion, of course, for whatever reason, is a political nightmare, uh, we were celebrating a couple of months back that prices were down, but we were mourning the fact that growth was also down. Uh, are you seeing any signs of economic pickup, people getting more jobs, growth picking up, industrial activity picking up, or is that not happening? Because that's then the worst of both worlds, that prices are starting to move up and growth is down, and then the Reserve Bank of India can't cut interest rates. That then becomes a very negative cycle. No, uh, Vikram, if I have to be honest, I don't see an immediate pickup in manufacturing either. I mean, there may be a marginal pickup. But as far as I'm concerned, starting October, normally demand starts picking up from consumers because of the festive season and November and December. From September onwards, the demand does pick up. So there is an increase in demand for consumer products. The FMCG industry is beginning to look up now. How much they're going to look up, we'll have to take a look. But look, normally vegetable prices go up the maximum during the period of the monsoons. And after that, they start declining. So if you look at the last two or three months, the vegetable prices every year, year on year, go up during this period. Now, okay. whether they've gone up a little more or a little less than the previous period has got to be evaluated. But okay. if they don't start dipping from October onwards, by the end of the month, then we are bound to have a crisis. Now, as far as petrol is concerned, my reading is that, look, Earlier, it was being subsidized, as Shekhar was saying, by the government through the government public sector. They yeah. have now been told, you please run your companies as efficient, profitable companies. And if you have to charge, you charge according to whatever the market can bear. If there is going to be a drop in consumption, I'm sure the prices are going to come down as well. Now, all I can say is that, look, there is a certain degree and a lack of communication on behalf of the government on what they are doing. Like they're doing good stuff. They want to collect the money because they need it for building infrastructure. They want to collect. Therefore, they think petrol is one way in which the money can come in. So you're there saying must be other ways. But if the average person on the road does not see where is that money going when states can actually uh, states so are glad, increasing the VAT. I'm so glad you. From the I'm center, so glad you raised the question of where the money is going. About things. Sunil, I'm, I'm so glad you raised the question of where the money is going because. Yeah, correct. So. Yeah, I, I, just, 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 just bear with me for a second or two. Just so you know, to take your point forward, if the yes. main justification for keeping taxes on fuel high and hence having you know all of these high prices, if essentially the justification for that is the fact that we don't want to have subsidies, then I guess the question will have to be brought up on the on the bullet train, and that after all is what has just you know been been launched today, and that that is going to raise its entire uh, you know own set of questions. You know, because people are going to say that, yes, you have reduced the fuel subsidy from, you know, whatever it was in 2013 to 2017. Essentially, this means that the government has more money to spend on things that truly matter. So that really is raising this entire big debate that's been raging since the morning on whether the correct way to spend the money is on the bullet train. So Prime Minister Modi and the Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe today laying the foundation stone for that ambitious Ahmedabad Mumbai bullet train. But that's going to cost more than 100,000 crores. To be fair, most of that money is going to be coming as a soft no. loan from Japan. But virtually Vikram, a grant. It's going to be repaid over 50 years. Vikram, well, I just let me just finish one more line. However, I will, hang on. Sunil, just give me a minute. Let me just give me a minute to finish this. But the BJP's own ally, the Shiv Sena, 
has had the following to say in Samna about this. Essentially, the, the Shiv Sena says the project is loot, it's not in the interest of the common man, it's meant for the wealthy, wealthy and the business class, and you know, it's not really going to help anybody else. So, I guess the question that has to be asked is, and Sunil Allah, let me throw that first back to you and then to everybody else. It's correct to say that yes, the government should not be subsidizing the rate, should not be, you know, you should not have too many fuel subsidies. But at the same time, today people are asking whether therefore it is it is correct to spend so much money on a bullet train, which only a small section of people will be able to take advantage from, as opposed to spending that money elsewhere. Sunil Alam. So Vikram, can I just add one thing? Look, again, it's a lack of communication. The bullet train is being financed by Japan. It is not being taken out by the, from the railway budget. Now, if the people are made to believe that the same money is being taken out from the railway budget, which could be bill, sent, spent on building tracks and whatever, of course, everybody will be up in arms. But they don't understand that they've got a 50-year 0.1% loan from Japan, which is specific only to the bullet train. It is not being taken out of the railway budget. Now, unless people explain this, I, I talk about com communication. Everybody thinks, oh my God, you know. But this is regardless of what is being spent. And people must understand that the railway minister is going to improve. He's not going to touch his budget for the bullet train. Okay. Now, you're not communicating that. If you're actually going to communicate that, look, I am collecting money because infrastructure has to come up, roads have to come up. If manufacturing is going to get a break, which is what industry wants, and employment is going to go, I need the money. Now, okay. if so, you start talking, maybe they are wrong, maybe they are right, but okay. at so least let me get the we will in. have a debate where the government is able to communicate what are they going to do okay. with the money. So, so That's obviously, all. Otherwise, you never build the metro. Saying, Why did Pabankera? you build the metro in the first place if you don't want the bullet train? Okay. Why did you build the ceiling?